You are listening to KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank, your partner in possible. Mike and Sweden, what does the Patrick Mahomes restructure mean? Well, I think it's interesting that they didn't restructure to the full capacity that they could have. They kind of did like a little right. mini restructure. They didn't kick a ton of money down the road. They converted some to bonus, but like they're largely kind of leaving things the, the same. They're leaving as much money as they feel Good. that they need to execute what they're doing, right? So it's nothing too crazy. It's 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 a small move. So it actually kind of tells me that you know maybe they're not super honed in on getting any major big one year additions until post draft after they've gotten the Chris Jones deal done. Like it's almost like the way I look at it is they know what kind of pool they need of money, you know, for their free agency moves or whatever at this point. And then they're going to um, get some, you know, some flexibility whenever they extend Chris Jones. I think the little mini yeah. mini restructure actually probably tells you that they're going to get a deal done for sure with Chris Jones this off season is what I think. It tells me they know exactly how much they're going to spend and exactly how it's going to be structured. I put this out on Twitter. I've said this multiple times that this stuff and the stuff that gets out publicly is so much further behind the planning and when the decisions are actually being made. When the, you hear about a signing, you hear about a contract that didn't just happen. It could have been done for six weeks and been discussed a long time ago when they crossed paths. There are number of reasons why they wait until it actually gets done but these decisions aren't being made now it's getting out publicly in a kind of a slow motion fashion that's why i said you're watching a a off-season plan with free agents so it just kind of happen in slow motion if they end up if they do end up bringing in odell beckham it would probably be something where the chiefs knew exactly what it would take to pick up the phone call and have it done and there could be negotiating, but they knew in the back of their mind, if we want to get it done, this is the contract it's going to take. This is how much cap space we need to get from Patrick Mahomes' contract to get that done. And so those little things mean more to me because they knew exactly how much money they needed to free up, which means they knew exactly how much money they were going to spend. And again, we're watching it all kind of happen in slow motion. Arrow asks, with Michael Burton going to Denver, is there anyone out there you'd like to see take his role? And is his name Hunter Lepke? Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't hate a Hunter Lepke addition if I'm being honest, but at the same time, my preference is no fullback. Uh, they don't use it enough. You know, find some guys that maybe can play in that role. Um, you know, in the in the pinch when you need them. Uh really that poor one out for Colin Saunders dreams right there. Um sorry beach i shouldn't have even brought it up with you here but still hurts my heart a little what's my i guy. know i know um but happy i for him, but. i it's super happy for him but, but the preference honestly i think would be no fullback addition if i'm being real lee 87 asks how comfortable with the change in quarterback coach offensive coordinator and backup quarterback are you will we see progressions from the room as a whole will it be flat or a step back and how would you approach it you take this one Okay, that's fine. Um, Sorry, I'm looking through 2024 free agent wide receivers who are 25, highly drafted, and haven't really panned out. Sorry, no, I'm kind of busy right now. You're fine. You're Mon fine. LaVisca Chenault and Darnell Mooney, another one. That's talking fine. about guys they haven't really talked about, young players. They don't want to pay him big money. I'm th just throwing names against the board here. Uh, I am comfortable with the quarterback coach decision. I am comfortable more than comfortable i'm thrilled with the offensive coordinator decision i love matt Nagy kind of getting more influence over this as well back of a quarterback not thrilled um you know there's a, there's an old saying i think it's tom moore um he he says you know like peyton manning gets 100 percent of the snaps in indianapolis and um you know, he's the guy that's, he's the guy that's, you know, getting all the press. Someone asked him like, Hey, why, why is Peyton Manning always getting all these reps and why don't you get the backup in there? And I think Tom Moore said uh, in more colorful terms, well, if, 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 if Peyton Manning goes down, we're screwed. We don't deal <laughs> with screwed. We don't practice screwed or whatever it was. It's like, A lot of times it's up to the starter too. If they want every single rep, a lot of times coaches will ask him like, Hey, do you, want to take a break do you want to this do you want every single snap and some players are like i want every single snap at practice i don't know if shane bouchel can win you a football game i mean there's just a lot of right. unknowns he hasn't looked great when he's been there but there's clearly something that this team likes because they've protected him two separate seasons two separate to keep to get him through two separate off seasons they have a, a plan for him and it might just straight up to be to to be patrick mahomes backup 
you know, there's might be good rapport. Mahomes might like him in the room. And honestly, that's a good enough reason. I mean, that's a good enough reason to just roll with Shane Michelle back there. Um, but I just, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if he can win you a game. I don't know if he can or- orchestrate a 98 yard drive the way Chad Henney did. Yeah. I'm going to go back real quick because we're going to jump out of order here for a second, Kent. I'm going to name off the 10 guys listed. I'm listed. I'm at spottrack.com looking at 2024 free agent wide receivers. Some of these guys are coming off rookie deals. Some of them, it's their second deal, especially with this first guy. But these are guys who, again, going into a lame duck year. If you're going to get traded, you get traded with one year left on your contract. The Chiefs could extend them. So this is these are players who, if the GM of their current team doesn't want to pay them another contract, doesn't want to pay them big money, but would take a third round pick to get rid of them if their team is not competing right now and that third round pick is more important. Maybe this is a name. These are guys who could could be available. Mike Evans, Tyler Boyd, Corey Davis, Curtis Samuel, Devontae Parker, Kendrick Bourne, Jamal Agnew, Marquise Brown, Calvin Ridley, Jakeem Grant, T. Higgins, Michael Pittman, LaVisca Chenault, K.J. Hamler, Chase Claypool, Josh Reynolds, Traquan Smith, any of those guys jump out to you? That the Chiefs could acquire, not really. I mean, T. Higgins is the one, but the Chiefs aren't going to get T. Higgins. Yeah, you know, like they're, yeah. they're not getting them from the Cincinnati Bengals. So, like, that's what makes it tricky. I mean, here, like, okay, no chicken tonight. We'll just do this. What's the next move you're pounding the table for? Okay, perfect segue. Let's just talk about this because we've kind of been teasing this wide receiver discussion here today. Yeah. Uh, the move I would make is. I think I'd try to trade for DeAndre Hopkins. What? I'm just glad somebody's on the same page because I've been saying this for like two weeks. And I, I thought like I know something it, it happened. Doesn't... Like I thought you were on Twitter, like about to oh, celebrate. No. Like as the words are coming out of my mouth, DeAndre Hopkins was being acquired by the Chiefs. All no, right. I've been a D Hop <laughs> Nuke fan since he came in the league. I thought he was always a top three receiver throughout his prime. I think he's looking for to be on a good team. He's been on a couple with Houston back early in his career. Uh, He's on a couple of decent teams. He's been on some really bad football teams with some really bad leadership at the head coaching position and to come into a situation like Kansas city. I think he would welcome it. So from a financial standpoint, it's a guy who's gotten paid, not saying he's going to take a huge pay cut, but it would make sense for all the right reasons. And I can't imagine what an improved offensive line, and a healthy DeAndre Hopkins and Patrick Mahomes could do together when both of them are in their prime. We've talked a little bit here, and I, you know, it's we look at this offseason and we said, okay, what do the Chiefs need to do? Who do they need to like? What kind of like what positions do they need to address? Edge, uh, wide receiver, they need to figure out offensive tackle. Okay. They figure it out, edge. And so, I mean, there's still room for improvement in an edge. Don't get me wrong. They took care of tackle we haven't heard a thing on receiver except for they're interested in Odell Beckham jr. But all these other teams around the NFL continue to make these moves to secure the Brandon cooks of the world. Oh, Hey, by the way, the Dallas Cowboys were rumored and leaked at, to be interested in, in uh, Odell Beckham jr. By if, if that reports true, Hey, guess what? That's a suitor gone for, for an Odell Beckham jr. Yep. I think the longer and longer this goes on and the more, you know, the musical chairs continues to go, and other players and other teams are continuing to get involved with different players. And we don't, you know, we see the chiefs are not involved in, you know, haven't acquired one yet, but there's two big names out there. There's Odell Beckham jr. And there is a new Hopkins in a trade. I, you just saw the compensation for Brandon cooks, who is younger than new Hopkins. I yep. think you're probably like a fourth round pick. The chiefs have a pair of fourth round picks. Everyone's freaking out about, will you pull it? Would you pay him 16 million this year and 18 million next year? Nah, 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 nah. Yes. That, well, <laughs> fine. But guess what? I think that deal's getting redone anyway. Right. Like, I don't think, I don't think the cap hit's going to be $16 million when it's all said and done. I think you're probably looking at something restructured. Maybe they're, maybe Nuke's looking for a three year deal. He's looking to add a year. And guess what? If you add a deal, you get to add a year, you get to restructure everything. You get to yep. flip, you can flip that whole, whole, uh, you know, contract on its head. So like I that's not a reason I think that's a reason everybody's kind of like freaking out. It's like ah like there's ways around that still. Like you can still redo his deal and and make it work. I don't think I think the farther and farther the 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 this goes on, the more and more I feel like you know Nuke Hopkins or or Odell Beckham Jr. is very much in play for this. Thanks for watching this production of KC Sports Network, the fastest growing sports media network in Kansas City. 
Check out these videos that feature our team of more than 15 former players, insiders, and analysts bringing you the best Chiefs coverage you can find. Entertain. Educate. Inform. KC Sports Network.